friends, and welcome back to Swift Lessons for another jazz guitar tutorial. In today's session, I'm going to be breaking down a complete chord melody practice routine in the key of C. Now, one of the best ways to grow as a lead guitar player is to learn intermittent licks that connect to each chord that you have in a progression. And that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. So I'm gonna take you through it measure by measure, and you can follow along using my tablature at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Support the channel there and gain access to a ton of extra resources for all my popular YouTube guitar lessons. Now, let's get started. Okay, close look at the fretboard, getting started breaking down this complete chord melody practice routine. Now we're in the key of C, and therefore, all the root notes that we have for the chords in the progression are going to be drawn from the C major scale. If I'm just playing the root note for each chord, I'm gonna have a one, six, two, five, three, six, two, five, one progression. And if you harmonize each of those root notes, you end up with the chords C major seven, A minor seven, D minor seven, G dominant seven, E minor seven, A dominant seven, D minor seven, G dominant seven, and then back home to the C major chord. And of course, there are different positions of each of these chord shapes found across the fretboard. Okay, taking a look at our first line of tablature, I'm gonna put it up on the screen, but keep in mind that you can print these tabs out at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Getting started with our first two measures, it's gonna sound like this, real slow. One, two, three, and four, and Okay, so that began on the ninth fret of the G string. That's the major third of the C chord. Then we're going up a half step. Then onto the B string, eighth fret. Just walking up the scale. From there, that's gonna get us into the chord progression, a strum of a C major seven chord shape. Okay, beautiful chord. I've got the eighth fret of the low E string. The ninth fret D, ninth fret G and the eighth fret of the B string. The A string is muted, as is the high E string. So far you have. Okay, next we're walking up the scale again. We're gonna have the eighth fret B, up to 10, then to the seventh fret of the high E string. Now if you start that little run by strumming the chord a little bit, that's going to sound really nice. It's going to thicken it up a little bit. So far you have. Okay, next we're moving to an A minor nine chord with a little bit of melody as well. So I'm barring the fifth fret of the D string, G string, B string, and also the high E string, but I have my pinky or my ring finger on the seventh fret of the high E string. Okay, we can include the root there as well. The open A string. Okay, from there we're going to take the pinky note away, go down to five. Then move into the B string, the eighth fret, to the fifth fret. Okay, that's two measures of music right there. Should sound like this. One more time. Okay, from there, we're on to measure number three for a D minor seven to G seven chord change. The two chord to the five chord in the key of C. It's gonna look and sound like this. Okay, plenty of ways of phrasing that. It starts off with the D minor seven bar chord shape, bar in the fifth fret, A string to high E string. I've got the seventh fret of the D string and the sixth fret of the B string. I'm strumming down to the B string. Then grabbing single notes with the pinky eighth fret of the B string, then to the fifth fret high E string, and then to the eighth fret of the high E string. Okay, that reveals some very useful chord variations that we have available to us when we're strumming through this minor seven bar chord shape. 
great way to reveal what notes work well melodically over top of a given chord, just finding those variations. So, from there we can slide up in to this position of the technically G7 sus2 chord shape. Okay, of course I could give this a really long name if I wanted to. But it's a beautiful variation of the G7 chord, kind of sits on top of the standard dominant 7 bar chord position. I have the 12th fret of the D string, then I'm barring my index finger on the 10th fret of the G string, B string, and high E string, and I'm also going to grab the 12th fret of the high E string. Okay, so we have two stabs there. Alright, from there we're going down to 10 on the high E, and then to the 13th fret of the B string to finish that measure and this line of tablature. Okay, so that full measure sounds like this. I like to slide. Okay, you put that into context and we have our full line of tablature, three measures of music. Okay, very good everybody. Now we're moving on to line two of our tab. Here we're gonna be moving from an E minor seven to A dominant seven to D minor seven to G dominant seven and then resolving back to C major seven progression. Okay, it's gonna look and sound like this. From there, I will show you an extra kind of bonus lick for our lick of the week. Okay, so that began with a strum of the E minor 7 bar chord shape. Just taking what we had for the D minor 7 up one whole step. E minor 7, that's the minor 3 chord in the key of C. So we strum that chord, and then from there we're going to have a nice descend in line. Just walking down the C major scale to get yourself to an A dominant seven chord. Okay, so we walk down 10th fret of the high E string, down to eight, down to seven, then to the B string 10, eight, six. Okay, from there we're gonna strum an A seven chord shape. I've got my thumb on the low E string fifth fret. I've got the fifth fret of the D string the 5th fret of the B string, and then in between the 6th fret of the G string. Okay, we strum that chord, muting the A string. Then, for a little bit of tension, we can just take the index finger, middle finger, and ring finger up a minor 3rd. So 4 frets distance. Now I'm on the 8th fret of the D string, 8th fret B, and also the 9th fret of the G string for a little bit of vibrato. Okay, that sums up a measure right there. Okay, from there we're back to the D minor 7 chord for a familiar melody. You know exactly how to do that. We had that in measure number 3. Okay, next we're going to play a strum of the G7 bar chord shape. I've got the 3rd fret, low E string to high E string barred the fifth fret of the A string, and the uh, fourth fret of the G string. A nice slow strum before grabbing the seventh fret of the high E string for a slide away with your pinky. Okay, from there you can resolve to a C major seven uh, chord shape in the open position. Third fret of the A string and the second fret of the G string. Okay, you put that entire line of music together and we have E minor 7, A7, D minor 7, G dominant 7, the 5 chord, slide away, C major 7, for the resolve. Okay, now playing through the entire routine starting from measure number 1. It should sound like this, a 1, 2, 3, and four and 
C, A minor, D minor 7, G7, E minor 7, A7, D minor 7, G7, C major 7. Okay, and from there, if you want to close up shop with a little bit of style, you can throw in this really nice melodic lick that's just a little bit extra for today's lesson. So we strum that C major 7 chord, and then we have... throwing in some harmonics there. So real slow. Okay, so it started off with a slur, 10th fret down to 7th fret. Just a series of pull-offs there. Then we're going down the C major 7 arpeggio. Okay, so we're already on the 7th fret of the high E string. We're just going to the 8th fret B, the 9th fret G, and then down to the 10th fret of the D string. Good place to stop and practice. All right, then we're down to the 9th fret D, down to 7, and then back up to 9. Putting that in, we have... Okay, then we're gonna grab a grip of our C major seven chord shape, which would sound like this. But I'm just gonna grab the 10th fret of the D string and the 9th fret of the G string, and then just grab a couple of harmonics on the 12th fret of the B string and the high E string. Okay, very carefully. Put all that together and we have strumming the C major seven. Okay, getting a little extra with it. Just like that. All right, friends, thanks so much for checking out this jazz guitar tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. As always, big thanks to my supporters at patreon.com slash swiftlessons. Hope you're enjoying all these extra resources. And thanks to you guys, I got many more lessons coming up. So keep checking in, please subscribe, please share. This is Rob at Swift Guitar Lessons in Philadelphia, saying happy picking.